Hello, 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 hello. hello. I think got a mirror live. We're live. Beautiful. Hello, 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 hello. hello. I think this could be online. Welcome, we're live. guys. And we are. I, I think we're gonna jump right into Champion Select actually. Uh, but uh, yeah, we have a lot to talk about in this game. Uh, so we have Zitem playing Forsaken. That's gonna be one of the most important matches. Uh, of the week. I, I know I said this last week or, or rather yesterday as well, uh, but I mean, it just keeps going. Uh, Forsaken, uh, to everybody's surprise, ended up playing really strong. And uh, right now, I believe they are fourth on the table. So, uh, yeah, taking a bit off of them, especially considering that in the first uh, game that we met, they beat us once. So, being 1 1 is going to be extremely important uh, just to make sure you uh. know, we can still fight. And fun fact, by the way, uh, yesterday uh, with uh, Z10's uh, win over. Uh, Comil and friends, uh, Z10 hit top six. So uh, if it stays like this, that's uh, playoffs for Z10. True, but uh, by the way, Goskila uh, did beat today uh, Eska. I don't know. I don't know. I, I was watching the match and I was confused. They played wow. last match. Yeah, they are. They got five wins as well now. So it's <laughs> it's it's kind of like hard now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Z10 is six now because there's uh, we have a match uh, less. Then, uh, then go skill and common and friends. True. So we we just I mean we just gonna be forsaken now. That's uh that's pretty much the plan. So <laughs> let's see how this works. Uh, picks and bands. Uh, we see uh pretty much the usual. Uh, Trin actually Trinimir band. Uh, with the Annie Caitlin as well on the other side. Zeri Gwen and Kiana Jinx is gonna be first pick. Aphelios being left open as well as the Jin. And we saw uh VZ do wonders. And I mean Z10. You know they're they're going with if it works don't fix it. They're just playing the same two champs as yesterday and. They worked really well yesterday. True, I, I'm thinking if they're going, going to pick uh, Twisted Fate, so maybe that's an option as well. Or maybe they'll just pick Seraphine today as well. So this is kind of interesting. I mean, they did let Jinx. I'm, hmm, I'm skeptic about that, but still. Let's see if uh, Forsaken is going to pick Nasus. I don't think so, but sometimes they play Nasus. Now it's going to be Victor, of course. <clears throat> Yeah, what do you the think? stats as well. Yeah, true. Pick like seventy-five percent win rate in mm. sixteen games. That's that's insane. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really strong. And uh, yeah, Nautil is going to pick as well. Uh, you had a question from me as well. What I think, and then I interrupted you. So sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Thing. What I think they'll pick against uh, Victor and mid. Well, it really depends. I mean, I don't know if they still want to play Quirky. Seraphine is going to be fine as well. Anything that, can, that has long range, they're just doing the same comp. And uh, honestly. Yeah, so. I don't see a reason not to do that, but I have a feeling they're gonna shift what they're picking in the fourth and the fifth pick. Uh, if I do believe Voitush played Nautilus, so clearly they can't yeah. play Nautilus again, right? Um, and then I believe we had Renekton mm -hmm. top lane on Moosh, and I maybe of course, Yeah, maybe. I, I don't think Renekton is gonna be picked, though. I don't know why, I just have this feeling that, like, you know, they're going for their power picks, sure, but I think they might pick something else. However, they can still play Renekton. I mean, he's... Especially in that mid game, gonna be really strong into Jinx. She's not gonna be able to take down all of his health bar. And yeah, of course, uh, later into the game, she's gonna outscale pretty much anything. But uh, I, I don't know. I just have a feeling they're, they're not gonna go for an Ecton this time. I mean, they ban Ganklink, so they will target top, probably. And Forsaken is banning top lane as well. By the way, Goskila, Goskila had Seraphine mid as well when they won last game. I, I, I literally was. She did like 5 men R. And they literally won the game. I don't know. I mean, before, before, uh, it wasn't last fight, but they turned the game after she did like five men are. It's really, I think it's good pick, to be honest, because it scales hard and it has right. insane wave clear. So I don't know what, what top picks are gonna be because they're banning like four top champs. Gragas banned, Gangplank banned, Camille banned, uh, Gwen is banned. So I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, what, I'm. I'm, I'm what, not what's sure. What's left? <laughs> I mean, Leona is banned, and like, I mean, Gnar. I I don't know if that's yeah. gonna be played because like I can see Gnar with Seraphine being really good, especially with Jin as well. When you open the curtain call, he gets the Mega Gnar. He can, you know, make sure that they're being kept in place while uh, you know Jin is doing what he needs to do. So I, I think they should still just last pick top lane. Um, we know Seraphine is mid, so they can just pick the support. They know the bot matchup. They can just pick whatever they want, and uh, I, I feel like Braum is fine. Um, he can block a lot of incoming Look. damage. He's also really strong with Xin with that basic attack reset with Jin. Uh, it's gonna be decent. It's not, uh, you know, Jin is not the fastest to proc bomb passive, but still uh, should do more than enough. And uh, yeah, as we talked about, he's gonna last pick or Z10 is gonna be last pick 
um, that top lane looking to counter pick. So now Forsaken is going to have the, you know, prior and the choice. I mean, if this was, uh, I was going to say, if this was, uh, let's, uh, Graves and Jace are picked literally yeah. every game. True. Um, and yeah, Forsaken is going for that Graves. And honestly, I can't wait to see what Z10 has in plan to counter that Graves top lane. Yeah, that's true. I don't know what's good into Graves, to be honest. Maybe, I don't know, Jace matchup might be... What? Okay. No. Uh, what? You're ahead of me. <laughs> Okay. Oh my god, okay, well, did you see that? Graves jungle and Mundo top, okay. Mundo, Mundo is also picked, uh, I, I saw it a few times, I think, in Let's, uh, but I'm not sure. No, I... Yeah, they picked Ranekton, for sure, nice. <laughs> if if they did it in Let's, I... I, I wait, wait, you would no, remember, they, yeah. They, they, no, no, yeah, yeah, they, they could have done it in LCS, I'm just thinking about it. Like, I haven't seen Mundo in, like, ever. Like, maybe, I, maybe I, I literally, I... I mean, I, you can tell me more, like, is, do, you, do you think, I mean, you're... I mean, I, mean, I, I you play Mundo a lot, so, like... You, I mean, is he good even? I mean, it's okay. You can chunk with Q a lot, but still, I think Crankton just beat him really hard. And I think this is good because if Graves was top, I'm not sure how Rankton is good into Graves. And I know that the Rankton is really good on Mumush. I don't know what else he plays on top because everything else is banned. So I think this is even better for uh, Mumush because. He got his power pick, he's playing against uh, Mundo, and if you play like smart against Mundo, you're, you're just going to beat him hard. So I think this is really good for Z10, it's better than Grave Stop, for sure. Uh, I'm still thinking if Mumush is going to play with uh, Ghost Flash, that's that will be really fun to see. But yeah, I'm not sure, maybe maybe he, he'll just go for Snowball, he doesn't want to play with TP. Uh, he he didn't switch, I think, what do you, what do you think? Um, I mean, it's 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 kind of weird either way. Um, yeah, with it's... the TP changes, uh, more and more. I mean, especially mid laners, they stop taking TP. Uh, top laners, we still see that because you know, past the 14 minute mark, you still want to be kind of left on your own, split pushing and uh, just doing damage. I mean, I'm not really sure. Necton, maybe with some like weird blade during King build, uh, you know, could uh, could do a lot of damage to the Mundo. So I can't wait to see yeah. it in game, but He's... uh. I, I just want to see Seraphine. I, I think, honestly, True. Sebex has scaled so much. And, and I mean, honestly, he just improved so much uh, from, from the start of the league. True. So, uh, you know, with, with his TF, I mean, they didn't they didn't go for it. And I think it's fine as well because, you know, TF into Victor is a lot more scary. Yeah, you have to come up close, gold card him. He's going to one-shot his Seraphine. He just CC him across the whole map. And she can also take off the shield. So, I, I just, I honestly can't wait to see Sebex play again top side. I think it's going to be a bit uh, slow. Uh, I'm I'm not a much of a Mundo player or a Rectum player to be fair. <laughs> I play them here and there, but every time I play that matchup, I just sit and farm and hope my team wins. So uh, hopefully, you know, we're, we're not going to see any of that in top lane. Forsaken sixty-one yeah. percent, zero thirty-nine by the Ultra Liga stuff. So it's quite close, I would say. I think we got uh, really good chances. I like the draft. So. I mean, let's see. I, I, I think Sabex played really good last three games. I agree as well. He showed that uh, he's playing better now for sure than the games before. So I'm just thinking that uh, Momush is going to play that random in Ghost Flash. He's rushing Botruk. He rushed uh, Blade Ring King last game as well. So that's yep. for sure that he's going to rush it. And I think he wants to snowball lane hard because... If you snowball that matchup, I mean, if you get a kill or two, Mundo is just done into Renekton. I, I played Mundo top a lot and I know the, <laughs> the matchup, it's really hard. So yeah, we are jumping into the game now. Uh, I'm just gonna close this and we are there. Uh, let's just sync. I think you're a few seconds ahead of me. Yeah, you can just uh, tell uh, me because I paused for 33, a bit to catch up. 33, 34, 35, oh, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay, yeah, we're good. 41. We're good, we're good. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Z10 with the uh, invade. And actually, just trying to sandwich Ruff here. Uh, he is sure going to have a rough time. Thank you for that, Ruff. Most likely going to have to flash it. The Q connects. And he, he's greeting out. Okay. He needs to flash that. Yeah. So that's pretty decent. Jinx flash. Uh, really good invade. They decide cool. to go from the left side as well. So Jinx literally had nowhere to run. And as soon as the Q connected, that was pretty much that. He did have to blow that summoner. So that's five minutes of no flash on Jinx. Um, do you think Rears is gonna start, start topside, topside and just pet, yeah. I mean, pet I, bot and try to abuse, abuse Jinx? Yeah. yeah, true. I mean, every game, uh, I know, know Ryu, he wants to play around bot. Like, every game he starts at topside. I know, now he wants to start bot side. <laughs> I mean, I would honestly start on red. 
but maybe he's doing something else because they will expect that he's going to come bot because Jinx without flash is kind of free kill if you manage to gank it so I think he wants to do something uh, else and try to get into the head of Forsaken maybe that's the plan kind of curious as well I mean if this was solo queue the enemy jungler yeah. if I was the Jinx he <laughs> would do blue into bot gank uh, but I'm not sure how much you can leave like room to Graves because you know like yeah. Graves doesn't matter topside jungle like when he gets a lead it's so hard to deal with him and uh, I just think Ryu is not gonna allow that this game yeah, I think, he's gonna trade. Yeah, I think he'll just honestly get blue Grump wolves and go to topside. I think that's the plan. Uh, okay, Mumush changed to TP. He's not playing with uh, Ghost Flash, so he changed it like 10 seconds before the game started, for sure. So I think, in my opinion, Ryu will just try to snowball top. Bot will be like farming lane, and mid will be farming lane as well. Ryu, Ryu can't like leave the top side open versus Grace because it's a champ that can take all of your all of your camps in a few seconds. So Mumush is trading top, we can see that. He's kinda winning at the moment, that's normal for this matchup. And we can see Ryu pathing top, but Sabex is pathing as well, this is interesting. They can three-man dive. I'm not sure if uh yeah, Shero doesn't have his passive on. They're forcing TP, I think. Oh, I don't think they're gonna okay. die this. I think they yeah. wanted to force TP, but now Shero just staying and <laughs> I mean this was uh, this was a uh, like literally a textbook <laughs> TP bait and yeah. Bomas is like nah man I'm chilling I'm I'm great here I'm farming and they're like okay sure. you're not gonna TP fine we're gonna kill because at the point where the dive started their positioning was so good that there was no way Shero is gonna survive until the TP finished channeling and uh honestly really weird I mean this was such a good play, like such a good play from Z10. They knew Graves is starting top side, they knew he's gonna end up bot side, so they knew the only person that can join is Victor via teleport, and you can see missing ping when Savex was already top and it's something he done he's done last game as well, uh with the really good drones and uh beautiful play with Z10. Th there was no winning here from from yeah, Forsaken. It's I mean, either you TP or and waste it, or your top laner dies. True, I mean he was there to cover because you can't you're right, you can't TP and on minion and he can't join if he doesn't walk to top side. And he didn't even get assist, they just like one shot him. But still, he was there if uh, in case uh, Victor TPs and in case they need to fight. So this was really good, die was clean. And like I said, this matchup, if you just get Mundo behind, we can see the damage of Mumush with pickaxe. Uh, it's insane, so they just need to snowball that top lane. I think that's the win condition. Uh, for this game in early game so you can get this ranked on ahead and he can split push and get big lead because bot lane mid lane i think it's gonna be farming lane you can't use that passive of brown that efficient with brown Jin, and they'll just i think play safe and they won't be in situation to be ganked I think they're waiting for for that level six i mean bcz yeah. with his ult uh, brown with the ult as well so much more gank set up there and um, yeah, both TP is blown on the mid lane, both mid laners return there, uh, which is to be expected. Moosh is doing the right thing of letting the lane push, same as uh, the bot side is also now. Xin basically has approach to any lanes, he can just pick, you know, what does he want to gain, because it, as you can see, top lane completely pushed in. A bot side also completely pushed in, and they are just waiting for him to show up. We're gonna see if he opts to go for that blast one, he can potentially just... Gang their bots, they have no vision minus the scuttle crab, so they're being pretty aggressive and now they're gonna walk up. Check what's going on and so far it's a pretty calm game, but still mm. uh 300 gold lead five minutes in. Yeah, I mean there is nothing to rush for because you got scaling. I think this game it's quite quite even or it's like near. Uh and you got that hyper carry on Forsaken, but still. I think this is good even if we just slow slow down the game and play for top side and like you said after six you can easy gank bot with Brahma R and Jin Curtain Call so yeah you really, really, really just want to snowball top that, that's good I mean I would do the same he'll get into question this. is do they know yeah. where Graves is mm, I don't think so because I'm just thinking like okay they're collapsing a big wave and you can see that both Graves and Nautilus are walking yeah. top side because they're expecting that yeah. he's gonna get dived on this collapse. Yeah, I, so. I'm scared of this. It's gonna be 
really rough. Yeah, they didn't see the bot. Oh my god, that's so Whoa. unlucky. Whoa, no, no, no. He, he saw him. You can he see the eyes on okay, the... Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Ooh, Sebex. That, that, was, that, that was, was a clutch. clutch. Yeah, that's a clutch. Guys, if yeah. they dive there, they were dead. Yeah. They would trade Sebex, three for like... one or something like that. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah. That, that, that was that, honestly beautiful. I, I think they, it saw like only one, maybe Nautilus. I'm not sure. I couldn't see the... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think like if you see not... You expect somebody yeah, to be yeah, there yeah, with yeah. him because if he was there alone, he just run under a turret. So he starts to dive. Oh. That was that was really clutch. Like yeah. Savix just seeing there uh, that Nautilus was in the brush. It's it's really really good. And now Voitus yeah. and Savix just sitting mid lane. Momosh making sure he gets that pressure top side as well. And Domus not that healthy on mana, so you can potentially force something on the mid side. Maybe even just go for Jake, but they don't want to do anything. Just wanna uh, let the wave collapse, recall, let both ED carries farm on the bot side of the map. Mm. BZZ a bit behind actually on that Jinx and not something you want to see Ooh. but still as we talked about Jin does have a lot of utility in those skirmishes so we're gonna see how that ends up but so far as I mentioned a pretty calm game now 500 gold lead for Z10 so it's increasing by a little bit but still we want to see a fight and uh what's the actual best time for Z10 to fight I mean are they just waiting for what to play? I, I mean, I don't think Blade or Renekton is something that's like a team fight Pirates fight, to be fair. True. So, I, I just see them, do, like, Victor has no TP, no mana. He has the cookie, but I feel like without blue buff, he's not gonna be that useful in the dragon fight. Yeah, I think they can just shove mid and force the Drake, in my opinion. He doesn't have Flash or Herald, maybe Herald is in... Is Herald spawn? Uh... Yeah, it is. Uh, it I think Herald yeah. is better, because you can snowball top lane even more. That's what you want. And... With Victor without mana, they can't contest, that's for sure. So I think Herald is also good to trade. First Drake for first Herald is pretty good. And they might even try to... No, they won't. Okay, they'll just leave the Drake and take the Herald. I was thinking if they're going to try to contest Drake as well, but yeah. I mean, this is pretty good, to be honest. When I play solo queue as well, I think that you get more value from first Herald. And you can set it up even better in... Uh, in pre-made games, I mean in competitive because you can just rotate and in solo queue you you're doomed. <laughs> so I think yeah, that's yeah, pretty I... good. Yeah, I agree. It's it's much better. You take the Herald, you get that gold, you trade one Drake, but it's it's only one Drake. Uh and it's you know the stats I'd see for the most part and they're negligible. I mean that the ocean early is pretty nice to have, but True. considering it's Hextech, ocean, yeah. some yeah, ability haste and attack speed, it's something that you know you're gonna notice like really late into the game when you actually have a lot of base attack speed or ability haste. Uh, but early on, I don't think it's gonna do all that much, and of course, Shelly crashing into a turret, potentially maybe taking the whole turret down, um, I feel could be incredibly valuable, especially when you have a Renekton uh, into the Mundo Seraphine as well, doing so much work, Sebex, uh, with that lost chapter. He's just showing up and completely abusing Domas here, because, yeah. again, he has... I'm not, not gonna say infinite mana, but he's pretty yeah. close to it. Every time he levels up, especially in the early game, he gets that mana back, he can complete, completely push mid lane and Domas. He has no answer. He's yeah. gonna eventually get crashed in, lose some CS and Mush. Potentially wants to fight. can kill him here, yeah. I mean, he's not ulting, so I don't think he wants to all in. Uh, he'll just get his pass yeah. and chunk. But by the way, uh, Victor did back now. He was staying mid for so long. He got full boots and lost chapter now. He's ahead, like... One item, I mean boots. Even though Sabix got uh, Dark Seal, but uh, yeah, like you mentioned, the uh, Seraphine is just Perma shoving the wave. And I mean, to be honest, they got like uh, kind of two strange picks. They picked Moon at top, they picked Grace in jungle. I haven't seen Grace for such a long time. So yeah, it's interesting. It's gonna He's be going a... for Eclipse, I think. Yeah. So this is uh, a bit in trouble maybe here. He's gonna get dive. He's gonna get dive. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, Voitush is coming, so he can prevent that. They'll just respect it, probably, and lose, like, plate or two, but they will get a um, top tower. Yeah, I mean, sure, turret race against Herald, and you know what's the best thing? If they decide to stay 3 men bot side, uh, you just go with Shelly uh, yeah, and you crash into tier 2, yeah, and you get yeah. a tier 2. Yeah. Oh, it's actually gonna be a dive here I, now. I think they can, they can outplay here. that smoke here. We're gonna see what they can do. TP is gonna come in as well. Brom, ultimate VZ falling really low. The Jinx mm. is gonna pick up the kill. And Sebex just gonna show up with that TP, Victor rotating as well, and it's gonna be one kill and a plate on the other side. I wanted to see what's happening on the top side of the map. Mm, I don't know. Is Shelly still Shelly alive crashed. even? We can't know. I, I don't think he did. I, I don't think Mundo moved from that position. And that's outside yeah. uh, Shelly charge range, so I don't think one it minute. crashed. 
I mean, it's still good if you can look at the gold, and now it's 1.1k, so it's, you know, slowly increasing. The only question is, is that enough, considering that yeah, uh, type of comp you're running? With the Renekton, like, is that gold enough? Because I feel like, you know, the 1,000 gold lead is on Renekton. Like, th th that's it. Everybody else is pretty much even. We're gonna see... I feel like VZT could survive here. here. He had Flash, he had... to Flash the Jinx Rocket or something. He was a sting. I think he could have lived if he played a little bit, a little bit better. Yeah, I think the the one problem is dive is they kind of hugged the. They corner. were in, yeah, they were in corner and Grace did Q and R and. Yeah. Jinx R was enough. With, with the Jinx R, if he uh, flashed up, uh, he'd still die, because he'd flash into the Graves and then Graves would just right click him. And you you need Bron to block Graves basic attacks, but then you need more space mm. to maneuver and they just locked themselves between the turret and the wall and the Jinx traps that came behind them. So. I mean, it's still look. Yeah. It's 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 I feel like it's more than fine. Momosh has that later doing king, so he's more than strong enough to do whatever he wants on the top side of the map. Uh we're gonna see the next Drake spawning in one minute. I'm not sure what dragon it is, but hopefully we're gonna see that uh pretty soon. And honestly it does not matter too much, I'd say. Uh at this point, you know, even the, the healing from the ocean doesn't matter because the sustain is coming in from every single hero anyway, so uh, you know, second ocean, not as strong as the first one. I think it's gonna be infernal, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's gonna be fine. I mean, if, you know, I, I get to pick one Drake that I wanna have, <laughs> it's gonna be infernal anytime. You know, you get the free stats, you got uh, the damage or the AP. But either way, uh, still not gonna change the outcome of the game, game too much. And I wouldn't be surprised if one team just decides to drop it. And Momoshir going for it. Victor Brom passive is gonna uh, get connected as well. But Wojtush backing off. And that's gonna be a flash, yeah. Victor with no flash, now you can fight the Drake. Yeah, this is this is awesome because he's half HP without flash. I think this is really good for Z10, and they can just take the vision, and maybe they can just trap them even. Ooh, this is so close to the catch the drinks. I mean, they want to get the plates. That's kind of okay because you got 30 seconds more. You can get that extra gold, two or three plates, and I think they will try to go for Drake. But uh, yeah, Grace stop. They are leaving the Drake, and this is even better because Zero Ten will take more plates. Uh, they know that they can take the whole tur turret, even. They can just get all the plates, maybe. Because they see Graves stop, so this is, this is really good. I think uh, Samus five, is actually... Five plates into... now. They're, they can take one more. This is really good. This is taking plate with Moosh. They're Top side the is gonna be tanky as well. There's two heroes and now the plate uh, plating is fallen. And, uh, I mean, if they we trade turret for plate. turret, and then you take Drake yeah. as well, you, you just you just want that. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter. And especially with the fact that Mundo, like, now Mundo is gonna be in trouble because when the wave pushes, he's gonna die to Renekton. Like, he cannot afford to be that close to the tier 2. So, for Mumosh, it's good that he lost his turret. I mean, it's fine, uh, because now, you know, he can freeze when he wants on his side and Mundo, there's no way he's gonna be able to contest that. Uh, especially with the later ring king stealing that wound speed, being able to run that wound down at times. And we see as well Sabex just chilling in the mid lane. I, I really like the Seraphim pick. I, I feel like it can make so much of a difference uh, in games that, that only that one ultimate can do so much. And yesterday we actually seen Seraphim completely 100 to 0 at Jarvan, uh, connecting all three spells, then just right clicking with that passive halfway across the map and getting a dead kill. The bot turret is going to fall as well. And now the game is gonna be pretty even, as you can see in the gold difference, only 400 gold separates these two teams, one Drake each, so... Yeah, it's it's a pretty close game and that's something to be expected. Now, of course, uh, the bigger question is gonna be who's gonna be playing uh, those fights better. As we can see, Z10 is the one that is still keeping the tempo, because as soon as Forsaken catches up, Z10 is on the next objective. Yeah, I mean, they're taking free. Objectives, they'll take Herald, probably use it to me to get that tier 1 tower. Mumush is going Giga Agro here, he'll just take the ward probably. And I think this mid tower is like the most important to open the map, so I think it's gonna be used on mid for sure. Uh, yeah, at the moment it's all about the Seraphine Arrow. If they team fight, I think that's the most important spell to hit. And yeah, Jinx is a bit ahead. Uh, as we could see, she's second with gold on uh, both teams. She got that skull finished, she sold it, and Vizzy just got his skull finished as well. So, I mean, it's it's not that big of a deal, because half item it's not that much, so... I don't know, maybe, maybe they should just group, force with Herald mid, that's, that's what I would do. 
So let's see. Yeah, we're just talking about tools in fights. Like, it's it just the yeah, fact that definitely. even though Jin is a bit behind, like, he's gonna be more useful to the team. I feel like Forsaken Squamp is more focused on certain people popping off and just, you know, getting that free DPS. And now we're gonna see Ryu just flashing onto the Jinx. The charm is actually not gonna connect, but Nautilus is gonna throw that depth charge and he might fall heal VZZ trying to snipe him, but Ooh, he's gonna block the Jinx, barely surviving. But that's another turret that fell, and that's. Uh, two turrets. Shelly can hit. Shelly can hit with 48 HP. Yeah, they, they, they can open. They, yeah. they can actually open this inhibitor. They can open. Nice. This is really good. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Yeah, but sure. one, one thing is bad. Now they can leave the tower. Maybe I mean inhibitor. They can they can just let Harold hit the inhib. I'm not sure if they're going to open. We can see the TP here, but I think Zero Tank can just go back because all other members are not there to join. So I think they're good here. They don't have uh, any objective to take. This is really good. The tank can just disengage and uh, yeah, they didn't let Shelly kill the inhibitor. I mean, it's seven. They had to help Victor. That's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think they they should have just let Shelly take the inhib. She crashed crashed into inhibitor. I'm hundred percent sure. They had like few minions as well there, and I don't know why they forced with. Uh, mm, I'm skeptic about this. They should leave this tower. I don't know why we we're getting TP on. Uh, this was really risky in my opinion. Ryu is without mana, Sabex just joined, so this was really good. I mean, it's waste of a TP in my opinion. They yeah. lost the tower, they could have died there. So I don't think this was good, but still, it was uh, good that they, they didn't use it. I mean, yeah, if they were smart, in mid inhib to open at uh, minute 17, 18, it's really good for enemy team. I don't know what happened there, to be honest. I don't I'd know like why Victor TP. Yeah. Jinx, Jinx gar or rather, Shelly guaranteed had one health. Like, after yeah. the charge on the yeah. inhibitor, uh, Shelly died from the first minion basic attack. And then it's only a matter of, you know, how many minions were left. But I feel like with the Victor four. TP, I with saw. the Victor TP, they're just like, oh, we need to do something, we gotta fight. So they had to move to help to Victor, and um, I'm not really sure if, uh, you know, yeah, that was, that I, I, was I, I saw Jinx stop that uh, inhib on minimap, so I'm 100% sure she did hit the Shelly and yeah. minions. So I yeah, don't know, I, sure. I would like to see a replay as well. This, this could have been, like, free farm for... Forsaken, but maybe they just have a plan that uh, they can fight or maybe try to get some fights. If they let that inhib Baron is in two minutes, Zero Tank could use that inhib to get the Baron, and maybe they just didn't want to let that inhib down. Yeah, as you said, Jake and Baron, it's gonna be pretty close in time. And again, Z10 just has so much of a better team fight comp. Forsaken needs those single players popping off Graves, Victor, Jinx. They're all gonna be playing for themselves. And then if you look at Zeta and Squamp, every single member has a role in that team fight. The TP is gonna come in and we might see a fight. Yeah, they, they for sure want to fight here. Voitish is taking a lot of damage with Mundo Q. Like I said, it's really chunking a lot of HP. Sabex is taking Q as well. Mundo is doing a good job. Sabex is on half HP. Voitish as well. They're engaging here. Nautilus is dead. Good R from Ooh, Seraphim. Charm? But Charm is Ruzaki not actually is gonna trouble. connect. Yeah, I don't know how Charm passed for Jinx. I'm blind or... Oh, Mumush! Oh, oh, that's actually really big. I don't think it's gonna be enough to get them away from the Jake, yeah. but Mumush killing that Jinx. Potentially, I'd say, maybe even stop the Baron. Uh, the Baron is gonna spawn in 10 seconds if Jinx was full health and alive. Yeah. They could have done that, but... Uh, I, I just think that was Graves collateral damage. We're gonna see that. And yeah, yeah Graves 2.2k yeah. damage. Graves just chunking lost, everybody. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what happened to the Charm. Like, yeah, it passed for Jinx. I don't know. <laughs> it literally went under her. Like, she was knocked yeah. up. What the and fuck? Then, and then she just didn't get charmed. I, I think... I, I don't know. This was just... So... I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna see a replay, 100%. Because I... This... I was sure that yeah, I was sure the charm is gonna connect. And then yeah. she's dead. Okay, we, we, we can see replay now. They got shanked okay, too see. hard. And we can see the Seraphine R now. Yeah, it passed through her. No, she uh, was 100%. knocked up. Yeah, what? 100% it hit her. Underneath her. I mean... He what? was supposed to hit her. What? Oh, that was... I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure she died. I'm not sure if it would change anything. But still, imagine this was a team fight. And this was like... Winning situation. Wow, bro. I mean, the uh, thing is, you'd blow a lot less to, to kill her. That's the thing. I mean, Mumush had to die for Jinx to die. Bro, bro. If she was just charmed there, you could just kill her without Mumush dying. And then maybe you can uh, win the fight as well. So... That was... Yeah, that was extremely unfortunate, I'd say, but uh, either way, uh, they still have to look for those fights. I didn't even expect them to turn, considering the fight started with um, Z10. I mean, most of their members just having half health. I thought they were just going to drop the Jake. Second Jake, it's a mountain. It's not that big of a deal, but they still want to use their team fights. 
to try and get something done. We can see the Serpent's Fang on Graves complete as well to melt through those shields. Still only level 1 boots, but let's see if Zetan can find another fight. Will the scout walking up, getting that vision? Voitush pretty far away, so it's going to be kind of hard to contest this vision. They have a lot of wards, but I don't think they can defend them. I mean, they will just try to get this min, uh, mid uh, pressure up, and I think this was a bad team fight. We got chunked a lot. Mundo did hit like four Qs, and Grave Star just did a lot. He got like uh, anti shield item, he got armor pen, so they need to be careful of that poke. And we can see Seraphine are connecting two people, Ooh, and that we can see insane damage from VDZ. They're winning this fight for sure. VDZ is going aggressive with Flash, Gale Force. They will go for Baron now for sure. Nice. That was like so good and so unlucky at the same time because the Xeno ult pushed the Jinx away from yeah. the Seraphine ult. Like that was so unfortunate. And I was gonna say that that was really unlucky, but either way, Z10 still winning that fight. Uh, Ryu knowing exactly how to engage him and to engage catching Jinx out of position and Z10 is gonna grab the Baron at the best possible time. Of course, they do have to zone out the Graves. They know where he is, or they yeah. see him at least. So they you just have to make sure somebody goes over the wall. This, yeah. They have that wall as well, and there's too many they players, so I don't think they can steal yeah. that. So nice. that's gonna be more nice. than a nice and Z10 with the Baron. Let's 23 go. minutes into the game. Yeah, this is really good. We can see the replay of the fight here. Jinx was... Yeah. The R from Xin pushed out Jinx. That was, that was unfortunate, really but yeah. We can see the VZZ flash and Gale Force. Good combo. Uh, he's doing so much work, like he was yeah. behind, yeah. but he stayed cool and he's doing so much work and that's what I've been talking about as well, like Jinx, sure, she's gonna skill better, but um, Jin, he's just so good at helping his team control fights and then once he gets enough items, then he just Gale forces into your face, throws a Q, basic attack and you're just dead. That's it. True. They are using their team comp pretty well and now we can just... Literally go mid, play arm and get that inhib for sure. I think Mumu should go side and prepare the way for bot inhib. And rest of 0-10 uh, can go just mid and take that inhib. Yeah, we're gonna see them walking mid lane, as you said, play arm. And that's exactly what they're gonna do. I don't think anybody can stop Mumush on his own, so they're probably gonna have to send two people. Drake is up in a minute, but I feel like in that minute you can probably just pressure out a lot more. Maybe even catch a fight in between two thirds. Voitish gonna see. Yeah, I think they're both for safe. Team. Safe yeah, passing. Yeah. They'll get the tower, go for Drake, and maybe continue to push after. Or maybe they will go for bot bot tower. I'm not sure if I, I think it's waste of a barn if you go for Drake now. They can just try to get some uh, pressure. Try to get like bot inhib at least and then go for Drake. Ryu is taking a lot of poke though. They need to be careful. Tower is half HP. Seraphine is poking a lot as you can see. Uh, but the minion wave is cleared. And they are caught here. So this is a really Ooh, good fight. Sebex finding that Nautilus share is gonna die as well. I think VZZ can find that. But no, it's actually gonna connect onto Ruff and yeah. the players forced to back off. Can they actually take this turret before yeah. they come back and heal? I think they will just get the inhib here because uh, Nautilus is the engage, he's dead, and I don't think they can wave clear. Mumush will just start for pressure, they can just... Okay, Mumush is actually diving onto Jinx and she's dead. That's why you don't play ADC, and they'll take inhib as well, so I think they can just go for Drake, go reset, you got bot inhib, you can just air him for mid inhib and Mumush can split top. That combo was just insane, Mumush deleted Jinx, 100-0. Pretty but much. they one for one is Drake. Uh, Mundo is half HP after TP. Ooh. Rizak is okay. Rizak can just jump over the wall, and Mumush is dead. I, I mean, I mean Mumush. Mundo is dead, so they can do anything here. I don't know what he's doing. He TP'd with half HP. He was alone. We can see the flash from Nautilus. He's doing a good arc here. We see he's just going to kite, and they can just play safe and get the graves and get. Oh, this is so unlucky. Drake was at, at seven. I mean, uh, hundred HP or so. But Victor is dead. Yeah, is gonna die anyway, and Nautilus should die as well. Ryu has that red buff, so he's gonna get the Nautilus. He connects the route as well, and Nautilus is gonna fall in just a matter of time. And Ryu is gonna grab that kill. Unlucky for Drake, but at least it's not gonna be so now. They're gonna be running down mid, getting one more inhibitor. 25 seconds, still three of Forsaken's members come back up, and the TP is gonna come as well. I think Zetan wants to end. Yeah, they can try to get at least 
Nexus Towers and I'm not sure if they can end. Maybe they can. Timer is, timers are like 10 seconds for phase. Uh, they will try, they will try for sure. They can get one, one Nexus Tower, but I think that's not a good idea to force the end here. This was like over forcing in my opinion, but still, they got medium hip, they got tower to 10% HP, they will just go back. And I don't know if they're going to wait for Baron two minutes or they will just go for top. You can see the replay of the fight here. It was so lucky that Muno didn't die, but still he TP'd and inted after that, so it's fine. I mean, Mumushi's build is just... It's hilarious. He went Blade into Prowler's Claw into Camp Tank uh, Chainsword. <laughs> and then he just does a... <laughs> yeah, he literally... He does a slice into Prowler's Claw into WQ and she's just dead. Uh, she literally has no counter play. I like seeing Guardian Angel as the fourth item. I, I think that would be correct. Yeah, especially true, true, because true. stopwatch next fight, you do the same thing, but then you stopwatch. Yeah. And then you can still like force so many more cooldowns while your team is still doing damage. So I feel like Mumush uh, should go for that uh, Guardian Angel. And we're going to see the fight here and how he played out Ryu. He did have the smite, uh. but he was so focused on making sure Graves dies uh, that he didn't uh, you know, see Victor going for that steal. And... You know, he ended up dying, of course, Nautilus followed as well, but Z10, uh, with those good fights, I agree not trying to finish fully because you can just throw the whole game and there's no need, yeah. you're winning fights, so like, there's no reason to flip it when you're already ahead. Yeah, I mean, they're not getting outskilled, they are still much ahead of them, so, I mean, it's not too big of a, deal, a big of a deal, they didn't die there, but still, you're right, they can just play it safe, wait for Barn, or just try to get tier 2 tower. Before the Baron spawns, that's what they should do. Mm, Domas has TP, but I think they'll just get his tower and try to force Baron, get the vision, and that's basically it. If they win the fight, I mean, they can just wait for bot, mi bot, uh, bot minions and mid minions to push, and that's all. Play around that Baron. Yeah, they're just waiting for that, walking back towards Baron. The minions pushing mid and bot, as you said, and... Clear vision, make a trap, Seraphine can just engage from Summer Train. She doesn't she never needs to be in danger uh, to actually start a fight. And I think that's something that Seraphine does really well. Shiro is gonna be the one the face check. He can block one CC, but there's a lot more than one CC coming his way, so they're gonna try to move his passive or rather remove it. And just uh, play around that Baron Ryu. Sort of fight. They just need to be patient here. Bot is pushing. They need to set, send someone bot. Ryu is making sure that they get the mid bar and then we can see the fight uh, mundo is deleted oh the charm actually catches the the nautilus and uh, domus is dead as well we can see the clean fight from zero tenacity mumush is chasing that jinx he wants to pro his claw but he can't smart from him that he's going uh, to run from them so maybe he will just ah uh, yeah. graze new <laughs> he saw that yeah he's Take like if i face check into nice. that next and i'm gonna be so much dead but you know what else is gonna be dead Woo! forsaken's nexus, nexus. because he then <laughs> is walking down a mid lane and bot lane they're taking one extra they're taking the other rough and Yonatis are the only two players remain and Mumu, she's like, I didn't get to kill it before, he didn't finish his combo, I'm not uh, gonna get a kill, but the Nexus is gonna fall and Z10 <laughs> is gonna get a vital win against Let's Forsaken. Go. Okay, this, this is really good. Okay. Nice. Let's go. 2-0 for a week, it's really, really insane. Ah, uh, beautiful week. A freaking beautiful week. I mean, the more beautiful thing is that they are playing better, as you can see. They are playing much better. Better they beat Forsaken. So yeah, this is this is really good. I mean, they can just go and snowball the rest of the games left before playoff. Yeah, I'm just checking out the next game as well. Uh, the next game today is gonna be Gentleman uh, versus uh, Rogue. Fix my cam. I don't know what's. I mean, I'm sending it over, over OBS Ninja, so there's nothing that I can do. It's okay. I mean. Oh. oh yeah, it's fine. The camera is normal. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, just looking at uh, yeah, next game, Rogue versus Gentlemen's not really gonna matter all that much. But next week, uh, Devils one and uh, Wolves. So the game against Wolves is actually gonna be really huge as well. Uh, I can't wait to ask. Uh, you know, one of the players that comes to the interview about it as well. But uh, overall, a super clean game. I I'd say they, they they just had another, like, really clean game. And, you know, as you said, they stepped up. They're playing so much better. Everybody's doing their job. So 
just a really nice game to see. Yeah, true. I mean, I'm just happy that they finally can uh, like uh, play their team comp at its finest. So yeah, this is really good. I mean, they can just go even top four at the moment, I think. So yeah, basically, I'm really happy about that because they are playing really, really, really better than the last two weeks. So yeah, I'm just happy. Yeah, hope we're gonna get a two interviews maybe. Interview. Uh, yeah, let's see, let's see who's gonna. I mean, and who's who was it last time? Was it was it Walter, Walter's last time? Uh, no, Savix did the interview. Oh yeah, yeah, Savix did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I almost forgot. The, the, I I just remembered the epic scene in the back. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, okay, so it was Sabic. So we're gonna see if they ask for Boytush or we're gonna get an English interview. If you get an English one, we can just listen to that as well. Yeah, true, true, true. Um, and yeah. then if not, we can just switch over to uh, to having somebody join us here. True. Uh, I mean, I can show the replays from the game while we wait. <clears throat> yeah, this was the Dragon fight. I mean, pretty clean game overall. They had like few TPs. In my opinion, that went wrong, but otherwise they played really well. Pretty clean game, even more clean than la than last game. So that's that's really good. Yeah, I'm just seeing the games that are left, and uh, it's I'd say kind of cool, but at the same time, you know, there's hard games. They this is just half split, so you know they gotta play. They gotta play everybody. Mumus. Okay. I mean, he he did so much work. Yeah, he killed Jinx like every time, on, or he killed Victor every time with that Prolis Claw. I didn't expect him to build Prolis Claw, to be honest, with that glass cannon build. But yeah, he used that uh, item really well, and he did his job for sure. So this is well deserved, in my opinion. Yeah, one hundred percent. We're gonna see if uh, he's gonna be on the Ultra Liga interview. If so, we're just gonna be listening to him and if not then we can just call him and he can join us here true true i mean in ultra liga they i think they random invite for interview because if i remember like a few times the mvp wasn't on interview so i'm not sure it's not like we can know so yeah i don't know who is going to come for our interview that's what i'm wondering so yeah Let's yeah, we're gonna see. see. We're just gonna we're just gonna wait for a little bit and uh, you know see who they have and see uh, what they uh, you know what they're gonna say. And then after that, uh, we're gonna have somebody here as well. But yeah, I just I, I kind of just want to talk to them about you know I mean what happened uh, you know in a really good way. <laughs> like <laughs> they they had a, a you know rather poor showing uh, last week and the week before that as well. And you know coming into this week, I mean I'm not sure if something changed. Like within the team itself, or did they start doing things a bit differently? Um, or I don't know. I'm just kind of curious. Like, what uh, you know? What did they change? And more importantly, whatever they did, can they do even more of that? Because of course, you want to see them win even more games. Yeah, true. I mean, uh, if they play like this, I just really want to see the the games against Wolves and uh, Rogue. That's what I'm looking forward to see, because if they play like this, I think they can even beat them. It can be a close game, for sure. So, yeah, I'm just I'm just uh, really looking forward to next week. It's next week's against Wolves, right? Uh, Yeah, next okay. week. The first game is going to be versus Devils. Yeah. They are 1-11, so that yeah, should yeah. be another like, <laughs> uh, game that you know goes in our they way. Need to win. And then, yeah. and then uh, next one is going to be against Wolves, and that's going to be one of the more important ones again, because... I mean, those are the teams you're fighting for to get in that playoff spot. True. So, yeah. That would be fun, for sure. Uh, okay. Uh, Nahu is doing an interview. I, I mean, so I guess we can just ask for somebody because we don't really understand Nahowski. Polish. Trudno jest być trenerem I mean, it's hard to be a trainer in Zero Tenacity. It's not a hard job to be a trainer in Zero Tenacity. But they are. 2-0 in this week. Do you feel Ulge or Witam serdecznie. Faktycznie łatwo nie jest. A muszę przyznać, że mimo sporego doświadczenia i wielu nie najmocniejszych splitów, ten jest chyba najtrudniejszy dla mnie jako trenera i daje mi najwięcej chyba takiego doświadczenia. Czy czuję ulgę? No nie, nie. 
to nie jest jeszcze moment, żeby czuć ulgę. Skupiamy się na teraz na następnych meczach no i zobaczymy dalej. Dużo jeszcze ważnych meczów przed Wami. Chciałem zapytać o te za Wami, bo były te trudniejsze momenty Meczyc. typu 0-2 tydzień, jeśli się nie mylę, mieliście chyba nawet 0-4 w pewnym momencie, czyli 4 porażki z rzędu. Tak. Jak wyglądały morale w zespole wtedy? No to też jest w miarę, w miarę łatwe do, do odgadnięcia. Nie jest lekko w takich <laughs> sytuacjach. Ja ważyłem każde słowo, zastanawiałem się nad tym, jak Saperka. przeprowadzać. Ale oj tak, bardzo. Zastanawiałem się, jakie podejście prezentować. Czasem byłem bardziej wyrozumiały, czasem skupiałem się na tym, żeby dać zawodnikom troszeczkę czasu, czasem trzeba było powiedzieć coś ostrzej. A no nie było łatwo, ale myślę, że też dzięki warunkom, które mamy, udało się utrzymać to na, na w miarę akceptowalnym poziomie, tą atmosferę i to, ten, to takie podejście mentalne graczy. I naprawdę wiem, że może wydawać się, że nie wiem, może mieliśmy jakiś taki mentalny dołek, ale wcale tak nie było. Myślę też, że cały czas zdawaliśmy sobie sprawę w pełni z tego, co idzie, co idzie nie tak, gdzie należy szukać korekt. No i też jakby gracze wiedzieli, że my sporo eksperymentujemy, że jesteśmy przygotowani na wiele różnych scenariuszy, w wielu rzeczach chcemy się sprawdzić i no po prostu pewne rzeczy nie wychodzą. Okej, okay, ale chciałbym pociągnąć ten temat, od którego tak naprawdę zaczęliśmy ten wywiad. Powiedziałeś, że to jest dla ciebie jak na razie najtrudniejszy sezon w twojej karierze trenera. Czy możesz nam powiedzieć trochę więcej, dlaczego Udo, tak Udo? uważasz i co się w zasadzie dzieje w środku drużyny? Mhm. A... Jakby samo przegrywanie kilku meczów z rzędu, zwłaszcza w regular splicie, nie jest problemem. Zwłaszcza nie jest problemem, kiedy, kiedy problemy są, kiedy, kiedy błędy są powiedzmy tak bardzo oczywiste. U nas, ok, eksperymentowaliśmy, niektóre porażki, tych porażek jest sporo, tak? Niektóre wychodziły właśnie bardziej z tych, z tych eksperymentów, Eksperyment. ale w niektórych ten outcome był zdecydowanie, zdecydowanie inny od spodziewanego i to wręcz poza marginesem błędu, tak? No bo w pewnych w pewnych eksperymentach spodziewasz się pewnego błędu i jak on się zdarzy, akceptujesz porażkę i ją rozumiesz. Ale kiedy dzieją się rzeczy zupełnie nieoczekiwane, no to wtedy, wtedy trzeba się troszeczkę nawysilać bardziej. Wtedy już trzeba wręcz czasem stanąć na głowie, żeby, żeby rozwiązać, żeby przetłumaczyć zawodnikom, że okej, okay, to jednak mogło się zdarzyć, mimo że nie było wpisane w koszta. No i stąd, stąd te trudności, tak mi się wydaje. No dobra, ale w takim no bo, razie... Wchodzisz... Przyznajmy, nikt się nie spodziewał, że ten botlane powiedzmy będzie miał gry, w których trzy razy z rzędu będzie 0-2, tak? Na, to prawda, na, 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 na to prawda no myśmy się na pewno nie spodziewali. No dokładnie, więc oni też się nie spodziewali, ja też się nie spodziewałem. Czyli mówisz, że to jest trochę takie operowanie na żywym organizmie, bo wiesz, my wchodziliśmy w sezon, tak. widzieliśmy Zero Tenacity, e, które zachowuje większość swojego składu, zachowuje ciebie, ty odniosłeś niemały sukces w EBL-u razem z tą formacją i wchodzicie do Ultraligi z oczekiwaniami, myślę, że się zgodzicie ze mną panowie, jako drużyna, która powinna być najbardziej poukładana, bo najmniej zmieniła, więc teoretycznie powinna to być dla niej kolejna sesja ligowa, a jednak ten start był bardzo, bardzo trudny. Jak myślisz, z czego to wynika? i czy te eksperymenty na dłuższą metę pomogą, czy raczej przeszkodziły wam osiągnąć ten dobry start? My nie byliśmy taką samą drużyną. Te dwie zmiany, wydaje się to niewiele, ale zmieniły to identity teamu. I jakby um, Mumus, ja kiedyś słyszałem u was na transmisji, że pojmowaliście Mumusa jako zadaniowca z EBL-a czy z EU Masters, na którym byliśmy. No nie, Mumus, Mumus w poprzedniej formacji był dla nas mega ważny. Na dole mieliśmy Michaja, który właśnie operował Serafinką, z Xem, Kartusem mhm. i, i czempionami takimi wixajdowymi. Tak, i my w ten sezon weszliśmy z zupełnie odwróconymi założeniami. Ściągnęliśmy VZZ e, i od początku opieraliśmy się bardziej na bocie. Mumus, ja, ja znam tego człowieka pół roku, a pierwszy raz wyciągnął w ultralizę dla mnie Orna, więc jakby to nie jest tak, że on był zadaniowcem, zdecydowanie nawet nie był blisko. A teraz się nim stał, przynajmniej na początku. No ale może faktycznie, może to jeszcze nie jest na to czas, może, może jeszcze chwilę musimy pograć troszeczkę inaczej, ale też z drugiej strony na pewno możecie spodziewać się tego, że nasz botlane jeszcze wypali. Prędzej czy później oni będą dostawać swoje szanse i na pewno my dbamy tutaj jako cały coaching staff, nie tylko ja, ale też Malte czy Shiroga o to, żeby, żeby oni nabrali pewności siebie, żeby, żeby osiągnęli ten swój peak performance. I na pewno nie wiem, czy to się stanie za tydzień, za miesiąc, ale się na pewno wydarzy. Bardzo bym tego chciał, nie będę ukrywał, bo, bo jestem też trochę fanem VZZ od, od lat, obserwując go na EU Masters. Ja byłem zawsze zbudowany jego formą i taką dyspozycją indywidualną, więc nie będę ukrywał, że mocno się rozczarowałem, ale teraz w takim razie biorę twoje słowo za dobrą monetę. Ale chciałem cię zapytać na chłopie jeszcze jedną rzecz, bo e, mieliśmy waszych graczy parę razy na wywiadach, 
wiesz, mieliście tak, że było kilka porażek z rzędu, a potem mieliście tuinek, tam porażka, tuinek, tam porażka. Nie zawsze te zwycięstwa były takie przekonujące i, i czasem pytaliśmy twoich graczy o to, czy to było związane może z takim poczuciem tożsamości w drużynie i oni odpowiadali, że może trochę budujecie się na nowo, że może trochę musicie znaleźć tę tożsamość, ale teraz powinno być już lepiej, bo znaleźliście, albo że już jesteście w dobrym miejscu, jeżeli chodzi o tę tożsamość. A jednak potem pojawiały się kolejne porażki. Chciałem cię zapytać, pierwszy e, taki poważniejszy sukces, ten tydzień 2-0, myślę, że dwa dość konkretne i, i nieźle poprowadzone winy. Czy to jest ten moment, w którym faktycznie Zero Tenacity wychodzi już na dobre tory i możemy się spodziewać tego, że trochę bardziej wiecie, jak chcecie grać w LOLa, co chcecie w tym rolu robić, bo też to były dość tożsame kompozycje, tak? Ta Serafin, ten Renekton. Jak to wygląda z twojej perspektywy? Z mojej perspektywy wygląda to tak, że masz rację. E... <laughs> I teraz, teraz faktycznie zmieniamy to podejście, nie będę ukrywał, nie chcę teraz za dużo informacji może tak, w tak otwarty sposób Jasna przedstawiać, sprawa. ale to, że te porażki się zaczęły przeplatać, mimo tego, że w pewnym momencie zrozumieliśmy, co powinniśmy zmienić, wynika właśnie z tego, że mój botlane będzie dostawał te szanse, że ja chcę, żeby, że, że ja wiem, jakiej klasy są to zawodnicy, że ja mm. wiem, że VZZ był top 8 AD Care w Europie, w, sorry, w ERL-ach, w Spring Splicie poprzedniego roku, bo graliśmy w top 8 EU Masters i przeciwko lecowemu botlane'owi obecnie, tak, czyli Targamas i Exmati. I on wygraliśmy mapę z Mersą, grał, grał na równi z tamtym botlane'em. Fantastyczny wtedy... performance. Wtedy. Tak, tak, tak. Do... Dokładnie, skrymowaliśmy też na, na wszystkie inne drużyny, na Misfits, na BTXL i no dobra, na Misfits się wtedy grać nie dało, ale na wszystkie inne, Yukam i tak dalej, o, oni stali jak równi z równymi. Mersa to udowadnia do tej pory, ale VZZ też, też, go, też go na to stać. I stąd się wzięła ta jedna czy druga przeplatana porażka, przeplatana porażka że, że my zrozumieliśmy identity, zmieniamy troszeczkę styl, mhm. ale oni te szanse będą dostawać i na pewno, na pewno udowodnią swoją wartość jeszcze. Okej, okay, no to przyszedł czas bardzo trudnego pytania. Jesteśmy tak naprawdę na ostatniej prostej w sezonie. Zostały, e, zostało jeszcze trzy tygodnie. Poprawcie się, jeśli, mi, jeśli tak. mylę panowie. Tak, do dziewiątego oczywiście gramy. Więc e, powiedz mi, Nachowski, czy wy jesteście na dobrej drodze do playoffów? Czy potrzebujecie jeszcze trochę? I czy w ogóle, jak uważasz na ten moment, do tych playoffów wchodzicie? Nie myślę o tym, nie liczę. Zastanawiamy się nad następnym tygodniem. Po prostu. Super. Krótka piła. Dobrze to słyszeć. W takim razie, Dachowski, moglibyśmy jeszcze długo rozmawiać o waszej drużynie, biorąc pod uwagę, jak ciekawym jest projektem i przedsięwzięciem, ale oczywiście będziemy to sprawdzać przy następnych zwycięstwach. Ale nie wypuszczę cię, dopóki nie dam ci szansy oczywiście na pozdrowienie kogokolwiek sobie Dzięki, życzysz. dzięki. Bardzo chętnie skorzystam. Pierwszy raz jestem, mam taką okazję, więc tak, pozdrawiam. Przede wszystkim moją dziewczynę, która mało rozumie z ligi, ale ogląda każdy mecz i dzięki wam, dzięki temu, że teraz jestem w polskiej lidze i ma komentarz po polsku, to może chociaż domyślać się, że wygrywam lub przegrywam, moja drużyna. Po drugie, cały Enrax z drugiej ultraligi, jest to drużyna, z którą jestem bardzo blisko. Pozdrawiam wszystkich, włącznie z coaching staffem i Korwina naszego suba z ITEN. Pewnie, ekstra. To była przyjemność i mam nadzieję, że będziemy mieli jeszcze niejednokrotnie okazję. A teraz, no co, świętujcie zwycięstwa 2-0 w tym tygodniu. Dzięki wielkie, trzymajcie się. Na razie. Rozmowy z Kasperem są o tyle ciekawe, że... Okej, okay. we're back. Again, do we have... We're back for Mumush. Mumush, are you here? Mumush, Mumush. Oh my god. Mumush is not here. He wants to he kiss his biceps. Ah, uh, there's no biceps to kiss. He needs to run to... He can uh... kiss Hercul biceps. <laughs> Imagine a meme. If Hercul went on cam. An interview. <laughs> He's in gaming calls. Yeah. Pick it up. Yeah, let's see. That's actually true. We could have, we could have, we, we, well, okay, imagine, they, imagine they switch <laughs> like every every time we win, and it becomes a meme. Always somebody else shows up every single yeah, yeah, time. Imagine like Hercul and Zeder just switch. <laughs> and Mobush is kissing biceps every game. There. Uh. Okay, we're waiting for Mobush. Uh, he'll be the guest for us. Uh, I don't know where is he. Not actually sure. Mm. We're gonna get some info, <clears throat> and then we're gonna see. We can ask him a couple of questions. Uh, let's... <clears throat> Hello. 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 How are you? Yo. I'm good. Um, okay, let's uh, let's let's uh, turn on your cam so we can just put you in the overlay so people can see your beautiful face. And we're gonna ask you a couple of questions. And we're gonna let you celebrate. 
Oh, okay, give me, me a second. It's me. <laughs> it's me. Uh, Discord. Okay. Okay, spot. I mean, to be fair, I do support it's me because your name is Mario. So it's literally, it's you, Mario. <laughs> it's me, Mario. It's okay. you, Mario. There we go. Beautiful. Oh my God. Gatsa's uh, OBS skills have improved through the roof ah. challenger mechanics we have we have you on the overlay so welcome congratulations first of all um uh, on honestly a really beautiful game a really clean game uh so i'm just gonna ask you you know taking into account yesterday's game as well as today's uh first of all how do you feel nice to finally go to zero obviously did we have two zero weeks yes i think we one. Our week one was week two? Our week one was two zero as well or no? No, our no, week two no, maybe. No, week two, week two, two was two week zero. Two. Yeah, but no, that no, was no. so long that was so long ago, man. That was so long ago. <laughs> so it's uh it's nice to finally get some W's as uh, we were planning to get them. Uh but yeah, we shouldn't get too cocky because of only one, but it's it's nice to finally win some. Uh, yeah, so we've seen, uh, again, the whole team like improving uh, pretty crazily, actually, uh, from the previous week to this one. So, uh, but I was just wondering, like, from your point of view, what happened that, uh, you know, changed? What, was it the preparation? Was it the patch? Was it something else? Huh? Was it Zeder? <laughs> Wait, I, I think, think his he... headset went off. He lost his batteries. Yeah, I think he lost his batteries. I mean, he's flexing. Okay, with, I'm here. With uh, my headset without uh, cable, so my headset just died randomly. Yeah, I'm back. Usual, headset. usual flex <laughs> with the wireless. Uh, uh, just uh, 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 yeah. So, so uh, in in short, I'm just gonna repeat the whole question. I don't, or did you hear it? Like the full question? So what uh, improved from last uh, week to this yeah. week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things we put a lot of effort on is it was a new patch right so we made sure we have a really deep analysis of the new patch because there were a lot of uh, changes with uh, the juggernaut items sterox being completely demolished as an item devs dance coming in more coming in and that's one of the reasons why you could see the prowler's claw run out on as well today because uh, we just oh, tested we cocky the cocky renekton the chinese renekton we call it because it's uh it, they played a lot in Korea and China. And the other one, obviously, you could see our team comp was a bit different. We played both games to top side, I think. So we we just made sure that this patch note we analyzed deeply. And we also made sure we fixed our last week's problems. Uh, we focused a lot on team fighting. If you saw, we demolished uh, Nash a lot. We, we liked starting Nash and that uh, was to our advantage because every time we just fought them and we smashed them in both games. So lots of good aggressive improvements we were happy about. It was actually really nice to see the team uh, stepping up to that degree. Um, so looking on to next week, you're going to be facing uh, Devils 1 and then after that you're going to be playing Wolves. And of course, uh, you know, from now on, every single game is going to carry a little bit more weight considering that uh, you know, we're slowly closing out on the regular uh, season. So how do you feel just about your team, your odds now, and, uh, you know, just uh, those chances to hit the playoffs? Yeah, uh, we are still... I mean, yesterday we were tied fifth place with, like, four teams, I think. So we are still not in a very comfortable spot for looking in playoffs, right? We still need to get in all the Ws, and we cannot afford to drop a lot of games. Um if if we want to still control our destiny, right? Because um, we we want to, of course. Uh, Devils one, we should we should feel confident about Iron Wolves. I think we feel confident as well. I feel like they got a lot of Ws just by being extremely far behind and then somehow clutching a team fight or two against us as well. They were like seven k behind and then we just didn't know how to team fight and we fucked up and then they came back really well. So both of those teams have pretty big weaknesses, I would say. We, we will look to abuse and we can play around. It will all depend on what Z10 will show up, you know. Because right now we have uh, two different Z10s. We have the, the hero Z10 and the zero Z10. It just depends on how you, how you open the bag, you know. We, we just hope to keep opening the good bags for the next week as well. Okay, yeah, nice. well, that's nice to hear. Hope that happens. Gatsu, do you have any any questions as well? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, did you switch to TP 
like 10 seconds before the game started and you wanted to play with Ghost Flash or I'm blind. I had Ghost Flash. I don't know when I changed it, but I had Ghost Flash because usually Trindamir has Ghost Flash, so there was probably a Trindamir game before that. <laughs> okay, okay. So you, uh, you wouldn't play actually with Ghost Flash. I, no, I was thinking of Ignite Flash, but <laughs> the yeah. Chinese renekt on the Ignite, I didn't. It was too cocky. I couldn't go that far. I I had to stop at one point and. And yeah. what what do you think about uh, him picking Mundo blind pick and Ranktum was open? I mean, I think it was fine. I, I got a bit caught off guard. Uh, probably I was looking for Aatrox more if in hindsight, but Renekton worked out really well as well. He did just got third wave Dove and right, he was useless. But you could see his champ pool being uh, really limited after we banned Gragas oh, and Gangplank, yeah. Gangplank. So his weak side champions at that point is Dr. Mundo, which is not a good champ right now. So he forced it and he didn't do anything. He wasn't tanky enough to do tank anything and he didn't do any damage. So yeah, it's one of their weaknesses uh, on top lane that we look to abuse because we understood their champ pool more than they did apparently. And that's basically it. Yeah, nice to hear that. Well, and what do you think about the uh... They first pick Grace. What do you think about the Grace Ranekton matchup? Would you still pick Ranekton into that? That that's what I was curious about. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you, can, uh, you didn't you just see the Chinese Ranekton? Didn't you see? Yeah, yeah. It's, and then it's, we get mushrooms. It's doing really good. So it it it. I I start doing that a bit earlier. Uh, if it's Grace top, because yeah. That's about that's, it. <laughs> okay, that's all for me. But also, I mean, we just kind of freestyled this Renekton as well, honestly. Like, it wasn't too too planned. I was like, okay, Renek here, and it's like, I can go Chinese build here, guys. What do you think? And the team was like, sure, go for it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah well, it's, it's beautiful. It worked out, and it's beautiful that I trust you. It was a really fun build to see as well. So, it was uh, uh, really, yeah, it was, it was a really fun game overall. So, uh, yeah, we thank you for your time. Thank you for the interview. Uh, now you can, you know, have fun and celebrate, and then... After that, of course, get ready for next week because you got some asses to kick and uh, we're going to be cheering you on as you do it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Okay. See you around. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. And so... there you have it. Chinese Renekton. <laughs> Chinese Renekton, indeed. I know what I'm playing in solo queue tonight. <laughs> I can just see Mumush did it. It's fine. I can, I can just build it. True. And then we shoot people. <laughs> Dude, I'm actually going to play this tonight. This is my plan. So, um, the next plan, or the plan is next, or this is what we're doing. So, I'm going to eat some Grashak. Not peas, Grashak. <laughs> and then uh, Gats is going to read patch notes and see what they've done to my poor Zeri. And then be sad for me, because uh, he doesn't care about Zeri, because he doesn't play her. And then we're going to play Duo Q, and then we're going to win every game. Ooh. And you guys are going to follow Zero Ten on Twitch if you haven't, because I don't know why you haven't. So, just click that follow. Uh, we're going to be here on Sunday with the community night, and then we're going to be there uh, Tuesday and Wednesday for the next Ultra League of matches. It's going to be really important. It's going to be really huge. We're going to be super hyped, and hopefully we're going to win both of them. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and we're going to see you next time on Zero Ten. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Uh, oh, we got sticks for real. We're looking out for the opposition. We don't do this for mass appeal. Mm, don't make me blast still. I put on work, no fly to mirror. They want me to lose, but I can't.